Okay, so uh, today, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually talk about uh, the pulmonary volumes uh, uh, and then its capacitance. Uh, so let's just start from there. Uh, I actually already pre-drawn this uh, graph. Uh, uh, so that way we don't actually waste time. Uh, so, uh, you know, one thing that I did here is that, you know, oftentimes, like, I see that we always uh, talk about um, the, we always look into the uh, male adult's uh, lung volume, but we never talk about the female uh, adult lung volume. So uh, what I did is, like, we're going to actually uh, compare between the male adult here, and also we're going to talk about the female adult volume too, because normally we don't talk about the female ones, but we're going to do this time, and we're going to, compare how uh, is there like differences uh, between the long uh, between the uh, female and male when it comes to a long long volume or capacitance uh, concerns okay and we'll we'll talk about that so uh, what is here is like okay this one is obviously uh, this one this graph is going to represent uh, the male actually so i'm going to write this as a, a male right here all right so so we're going to talk about this one now see the, the right here the graph so what happens in our lungs okay so quickly before uh, we go into this graph so if we if we think about lung a, a lot what is the what is the properties of lungs the properties of lung is that lungs has a lot of elastic properties so that's why because lungs have a lot of the elastic properties if I just quickly draw let's just make a one lung right here for me okay but make this one lung right here lung has elastic properties so because of this elasticity what lung always wants to recoil inward okay that's what it is they always want to recoil inward that's the properties of the lungs okay but other thing is that lung also but because the thoracic cavity because remember this is covered by what this is covered by my visceral pleura right here let's just say this absorb visceral pleura right that's what it is and then and then you have this extra layer this, which is covered by my let's say the this is the, let's make a cross sections of uh, thoracic wall right here all right so look at this so i make a cross section of thoracic wall all right and this this is bound by the parietal pleura right here see see what i mean so so this is what it is so if i make a cross section if you look at this this is my this space between the visceral and parietal space we call it a potential space okay and this is a potential because this is the parietal pleura is actually bound with the thoracic cavity thoracic cavity right here see so because of this what happens this thoracic cavity always want to what go outward okay that's the that's the usually functions of thoracic wall so they they like to they want to recoil outward so let's say recoil outward okay and then lungs recoil inward okay that is something that i want to input and the reason why i'm talking about is this is because when we're talking about the volume especially this volume that in the man that is no matter how you would not able to exhale out okay no matter how much you try forcefully you would not able to uh, able to remove this this volume of the air from your lungs and it's because of this because, th because of the thoracic wall okay because what happens no matter how much you try to compress the lung because of the thoracic property which is like to go outward it would prevent uh, to lung to completely collapse okay because of that there's some air left in and that air that's left in after the forceful expiration we call them out we call them as a residue of volume okay we call them a residue and this residue of volumes in in usually in healthy male adults is about like here we make it it's about like from here is about like a this is my residue of volumes okay we make this residue of volumes right here and it's about like 200 ml of the <laughs> sorry of the air okay that's what residual volume is now this is my residual volume now but during okay this is residual and what about like right here like between like 23 to 2800 okay usually we call this portion if you like do if you subtract 2800 minus 2300 what do you get you get 500 ml of the air right so this uses the 500 ml of the air we say like from here let's say we say you inspire this and you exhale out this you inspire this you exhale out and this is a quiet breathing okay so whenever you take air in 
and out. Okay, during a during a quiet during a resting condition, like during it's a quiet breathing or per minute. Whenever you take air in and out quietly, okay, without using any sort of like forceful muscles or inspiratory muscles. Uh, in that case, what happens is that the volume of air and you take it out. We call them a tidal volume. Okay, what do we call them? Tidal volume. And this is ref. Uh, usually we. So if you want to write it down, it's called. Uh, what's, what's Let's just write it down here. So we said this is a tidal volume. Okay. Or uh, they emphasize this as a. Or uh, you can say VT simply if you want to be. All right. This is the normal breathing, uh, inspirations and expirations. All right. Now. That's what it is. So now, if I could erase this part. All right, so if I could erase this part right here, if, if out, and this is about like, how, how much we say? We say this is about like your 500 ml of the air right here, 500 ml of the air, okay? And so what is the space between this two right here? Look, you have 1200 ml and 20 ml. If you subtract this 23 minus 1200 ml, how, do you, how much you get? You should be able to get like what? 1100 ml of air, right? So let's just make this 1100 ml of air. So just write in different color right here. So make it here, okay? So this one would be like from here to maybe like here, right here. Okay, we'll make this as, look, this one right here. What do we, and this one is, we refer this as a, we can say this as expiratory. Okay, reserve volume. All right, this is here. And what is that? This about 23 ml, that's about 1100 ml of the air. Okay, and this is we said 1200 ml. Okay, we already said that, right? That's right there. Now, so let's define this. Okay, we talked about tidal volume, the amount of air in and out. We take in and out during the quiet breathing. That's what normal tidal volume is. Residual volume is amount of air that with a forceful expiration that still stayed after the forceful expirations, okay, you can no longer, you cannot uh, remove the air out. That's called residual volumes. And I also talked about wh why you cannot remove that out, okay? What about the expiratory reserve volume? The expiratory reserve volume basically means is that the amount, like oh, that amount of the air that you would expire amount of this air, okay, whenever you can, if, if this volume is like, whenever you take the maximum uh, ma uh, amount of air that you can actually forcefully exhale out, that's called expiratory reserve volumes, okay. And how do we do this? We can take this after forceful inspiration, you can take lots of air in, right? And that is called expiratory reserve volume because you took the maximum air inside there and then it's remained an expiratory reserve. So the, the amount of air that you can actually maximally exhale out is called expiratory reserve volume. Again, maximum air you can able to exhale out is called expiratory reserve volume. Now, I'm going back to this point right here, in right here, right? And then we'll make this. Excel, and then we'll make this one Heather. Now, what about this back chunk right here? We'll talk about this in a different color right here. All right, now this one is going to be what? From here, tidal volume, so all the way down to 20, 5,800 to 2,800 ml of the blood. If you subtract this one, you should be able to get what? Like a 3,000 ml of that. So basically, you'll go all the way down to go all the way up and then make this circle right here up to here. Okay, this part right here. And this is going to be mine. Inspiratory reserve volume, we call them, and it's about what 3000 ml. Okay, look at this. So, if you look at this thing, all right, now, so inspiratory reserve volume, the define is the amount of air that maximally you can take in, that is called inspiratory reserve volume. The maximum air after the tour, after the tidal volume. On top of the tidal volume, maximum air you can take in. That is called inspiratory reserve volume. And this is whenever you try to take the maximum air in, what happens is that, okay, first of all, with the diaphragm, whenever we take the air in, what happens? In normal, your, your muscle, the diaphragm contracts, right? The diaphragm contracts, and it brings one centimeter down, one centimeter down, diaphragm, diaphragm side nerves, that, that pulls the thoracic cavity outward, and then also lungs gets 
pull outward to recoil outward to because of the what happens they, there is a pressure gradient difference happens the air comes in right that's how tidal breathing is but the, whenever you take inspiratory uh, whenever you take the maximum forceful inspirations okay then what you have to use some muscles okay so the muscle that could be used is called uh uh, you use like external intercostal muscles, or uh, sometimes you can use accessory muscles too, like sternocleidoid mastoid muscles, scalene muscle, in some conditions like pectoris minor muscle too. Uh, that will help you to actually take more air in. Okay, that that's uh, that's what inspiration of volume basically means. Like if I want to see you, sorry. See, that's like a maximum air I am taking in. That's called inspiratory reserve volume. Okay. And the expedited reserve volume is basically like I'm throwing this air out though. That's what this is, okay? If I want to sew that. Now, now this is the volume, right? Now, they also talk about the capacitor. What is capacitance? The capacitance basically means when you add, okay, two, like two or more volumes, two or more volumes, then that can give you capacitance. That's what capacitance basically means, right? So, here, uh, we have to talk about, oh, uh, we're going to talk about the couple of things here. One thing is that we talk about, let's say, uh, capacitance of this one. Because remember, if I add your IRV, which is inspiratory reserve volume, plus your total volume, okay, so if I write down your IRV, which is inspiratory reserve volume, plus I, write, I add total volume, that will give you my inspiratory reserve capacitance. You see what I mean? So this is the inspiratory reserve capacitance, the maximum air you can take in. That's what inspiratory reserve capacitance means. Okay. Now, if I say, so if I if I want to find my inspiratory capacitance, what is that? In here, we have what? Your 3000. Okay. This is my volume. 3000, all right? ML plus, all right? My volume is 500 ML. What is that going to give me? It'll give me, give me a... 3500 ml of my inspiratory reserve capacitance or if you want to find a liter you can just say 3.5 liters okay that's my inspiratory reserve capacitance right this one okay now what about my okay what is the there's also another fundamental called a vital capacitance what is vital capacitance basically means so you do vital capacitance okay the vital capacitance okay which basically means that the two things that you can take okay the the maximum air you can exhale out after the full inspiration that's what valve capacity means right the maximum air maximum air you can exhale out after the after full inspirations and for that one what you have to do is like look you have to do your inspiratory reserve volumes right here right you have to know that plus you also have to know the tidal volume, okay? You can say VT or TV. TV, that's a register of VT right here. Plus, this expiratory of volume, you can also throw this out, right? Expiratory of volumes. So what do I get if I get that? Or another equation I could write it down here is like, a, I already know my, look, my, this, this two is representing which one? This one, right? IRV plus VT is my IRC, which is a capacitance, plus I can do ERV. Right? I could give I could get that. No? Now if I get that, what is that? What does that mean? Then I could just do this. I already know my 3.5 liters, I have 3500 ml. Okay. Plus I can do expert reserve volume, which is what? 1100 ml in this case, right? And if you just add together, what is this? It's gonna be 4600 ml. Or you can say 4.6 liter. Okay, this is my vital capacitance. Right? Now now, what is the concept of, okay, if there is a uh, inspiratory reserve volume, uh, capacitance, that means maybe there should be this guy too, like your expiratory reserve capacitance should be there too, right? So, is it normal they don't use, but they, they should use that too. So, what is that case if that's the case? Then basically, we do my tidal volume plus this one, which is VT, plus my inspiratory reserve volume. In this case, what is VT is going to be? My VT is 500 ml, plus my, what is my, uh, this one, which is, 1100 in this case, right? What is that going to give me? Your 500 plus 1100 which is going to be 1600 ml or I could just say 1.6 liter. This is my expiratory reserve capacitance, okay? Or there's another equations I could use to find my vital capacitance which basically so if you add all this together, okay, which is vital capacitance, right? 
Okay, we'll talk about that later actually. So now, coming back, we'll talk more later about that. Now this is one. Now, we talk about the IRC. We talked about uh, VC right here. We also have to mention about what about this residual volumes, okay? Whenever you add, what about this, whenever you add residual volumes plus uh, this uh, ERV, what do we get? They call this as a functional residual capacitance. Whenever you add ERV, which is expiratory reserve volume plus your residual volumes, okay? And what is that going to give me? That will give me functional residual capacitance. In this case, you have 1100 ml, okay? Plus, you have a 1200 ml, right? What is that going to give me? 1200, 2300 ml, or I'll simply say 2.3 liters of air. And this is my what? Functional residual capacitance, okay? Now, now let's say, what if we add all this together? Like, let's say if we add all this together, for example, I add IRV, plus my I add VT, which is total volume, plus I add my expiratory reserve volume, plus I add my residual volume, what do I get? I get the total volume, right? We get, I get the total long volume. Or, we get, or if you remember, if we add more than two volumes, what do we get? Capacitance, we get total long capacitance. You see what I mean? So when you add all this together. And total long capacitance basically means is it's, it's just like when you take the maximum air in, okay, then you can determine the total long capacitance. But remember, one of the key fundamentals is that you know, in order to measure your, uh, the, the, how much lung air in your in your body, you cannot use residual volumes as, you cannot use residual volumes because you would not able to know the how much residual volumes is present in your body uh, with the spirometers. So uh, with the spirometers, so they use like some kind of other methods, like a. a uh, the helium dilution methods uh, or some other methods to actually determine how much residual volumes are there. Uh, uh, so just wanted to let you know. So anything that includes the residual volumes, you're not able to, like uh, with the spirometers, you're not able to actually determine that. Like for example, with the spirometers, like you're not able to use it, to, you're not able to determine the total lung capacity because there is a uh, residual volume is present there. What about the functional residual capacity? You're not able to because residual volume is also present there, okay? And residual volume itself, you're not able to determine by the spirometers. But now, if I know, there's also one more equation I could even use to find the vital capacitance, right? What if I know my total lung capacitance, okay? And if I know my residual volumes, if I know my total lung capacitance and my residual volumes, I could just simply find this one, total lung capacitance, okay, minus my residual volumes in order to find my vital capacitance too, right? So in this case, if my total lung capacitance is what? If I add all this together, you should be able to get 5800 ml, right? That's what you should be able to get. And then, if I know my 5800 ml, if I subtract this minus my residual volumes, I should be able to get my this one, 4.6 liters. That's how you can find. Okay, now, there is one more thing that I do want to mention is, and that is something called closing volume. What is the concept of closing volume? Okay, this is called closing volume. Okay, so closing volume basically means is that, amount of long volume okay the amount of long volume okay what happens is that um, the volume of the lung the volume lung in which the smaller airways okay the volume of the lung in which the small the smaller airways started closing during your expirations okay so so in that case usually what happens is that uh, whenever if you want to find so just defining that as closing volume, which basically means amount of the okay, the whatever whenever you expire, the small airways start closing, okay, and that determines your closing volume. So, if you want to find your closing capacitance, okay, you need to do closing capacitance CC is equal to you need to know the residual volumes plus your closing volume, okay. So, when you know your residual volume plus your closing volume, then you can find the closing capacitance, and that tells you the how much small airways has been actually. Close during your expirations. I'm gonna emphasize on that during your exp expirations. Okay, that's closing capacity. And usually in normal conditions, what happens is that uh, your closing capacitance is less than your FRC. Okay, but in your like like for example emphysema or something, your closing capacity would be like higher than your FRC. The reason why is because remember during the expiration, the most more airways are 
like closed. That's just why in Ephesima, you're going to see this uh, closing capacity will be greater, greater uh, than FRC. Okay, a couple of things I want to mention. That. See, this startup volume right here, this is the amount of air you're taking in and out in normal breathing, right? This can change, okay? Whenever we take like a, this can change. Do you, uh, uh, even if you do rapid breathing or if you do shallow breathing or this uh, this increase during like people who are women uh, who are pregnant, okay? Uh, this can change that. Uh, even uh, like for example, uh, uh, this inspiratory reserve volumes too, or inspiratory reserve capacity. Uh, these these are deter these are actually uh, important uh, for uh, the muscles because you are the are the muscles in your body are they healthy are they strong enough, and then also the elastic recoil properties of your lungs. That's also plays an important important role. Okay. Are they compliant? That's also very important. Okay, because based on that, that can actually they can change the inspiratory reserve uh, reserve capacitance. Okay, same with the expiratory reserve volume too. Uh, and then uh, these these are very important because if you are, like for example, like if you are uh, if you are. Uh, 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 like emphysema or some kind of you have COPD, then what's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen is that every time when you excel, the air, sm the small air, gets trapped. Okay, because what I what happened with emphysema is they have lost the elasticity. Okay, so the 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 there's a, there's a big alveoli. So every time when you excel, what happens? The small the air is getting trapped into it. So lungs become little like. You know, like bigger uh, and then boggy, so it becomes that, right? So because of that, what happens is that your residual volumes would go up really high, okay? When the residual volumes will go up really high, and when you add all of them together, your vital capacity will decrease uh, 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 when it comes to emphysema, okay? And so there's a restricted disease where there's also like, you know, with the restricted disease, usually you have difficulty taking the air in, right? Just like, for example, the problem would be here, right here. So if you're not able to take a lot of air in, what's going to happen is that obviously in that case, you're going to have total lung capacity, which will decrease. Uh, you have a, a battle capacitance uh, that, would, uh, that would decrease. Uh, all of them would decrease, right? Now, that's what, that's what I wanted to emphasize on. Now, this is... And this can change based on the clinical or uh, clinical or even physiological changes too, okay? But now this is a man, right? But we have to also talk about female. Uh, so here, to talk about female, so what we're going to do is like, with the female, and we're going to compare what difference. Usually like, you know, if the female, uh, their, their residual volume is, uh, is about like 1100 ml of 1100, okay? So this is what usually... Like what, what color I did? There, they did black, so I'll do black there too. So usually it's about like 1100 here. This is the air, okay? This is residual volumes for female is about like 1100 ml of the air, okay? And then if you look at this here, if you see the this guy right here, which is 1100 to like 1800, the difference is 700 there, right? And in that 700, the difference, uh, this guy right here will make this one a little more here there differently and this one is called expiratory reserve volume right here okay and if you see the expiratory reserve volume what is this this is 700 the expiratory reserve volume and look at the male and so what is this it's 1100 right it's very very like low when it comes about the female okay and then luckily like you know the tidal breathing is for them too it's a 500 ml of the air it from various to various, but uh, from but but we're just talking about that, like you no know, uh, inspirations, expirations, and inspirations. Okay, and this is going to be a, a VT is going to be your five hundred ml of the air. Okay, now what about uh, this guy right here? Uh, inspiration right here. So that this is going to be what. All the way across. What is this gonna? This is gonna give me my inspired reserve volume, and that is like what is it? Forty-two hundred minus twenty-three hundred. That should give me about uh, what is this? Nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred ml of the air for inspired reserve volumes, right? Look. So usually the females are working in these conditions, right? So now if I find that it's let's just do the 
IRC. Inspiration is your capacitance for female. Okay, this is making a diagram of female. All right. So if we do 1900, which is a IRV, okay, 1900. Right? That's the equation. For capacitance, you do inspiration of volume plus total volumes, which is a 500. Okay? What is that going to give me? 1900 plus 500. Okay, this is going to be 2400 ml. Or you can just say 2.4 liters. Okay? What about, let's say, my ERC for this our case? Your total volumes, which is a 500 plus 700, which is an expiration of volumes. This is ml. Okay? And 700 by 1200. ML, or you can just say 1.2 liter. All right. What about my Avada capacitance? Okay, you add all this together. You have ERV, which is a 1900, right? Plus, you do 500, plus you do 700, correct? You guys are following me, right? And ML. So that, in this case, what? 700 plus 500, that's 1200, right? Right, there's a 1200. And then when you do 1200, right? Plus, like you have a 1900, what is that going to give me? 11, right? So you have a 3100 ml, right? Or you can simply say 3.1 liters. This is my vara capacitance. And you know, there's other equation you can find the vara capacitance too. If you know your total lung capacity, you can do total lung capacity minus residual volume if you know your residual volumes, right? Or if you know all this four, you can add together. What about my functional residual capacitance? Which is, you're adding, what is this? Adding ERV plus your RV. Your 700 plus you are 1100 ml of the air for the, and that will give you what? 1800 ml, or you can say one point liters for your FRC. So this is a, this is your FRC for your, your female, right? And if you do total lung capacitance, we have to find the total, total lung capacitance, is about what you add all of them together, or you can do, add capacitance, you can do IRC, you can do, right? IRC you can do, but you cannot do, remember guys, you can, you can, if you do IRC, but make sure you do not do the ERC there because the capacity already there are volumes already out of there, so you don't want to get confused, okay? You can do IRC, right? And then you probably do a FRC maybe, okay? In that case, it should be able to give you, the, it should be able to give you 4200 ml or simply 4.2 liters of the air, okay? But if you look at the compare with the male, what is my uh, ERV, ERC? That's 3,500. Look at the females. That's a lot less, right? 35, that's a, uh, females have like, uh, the IRC for female is 2,400. Male, male is like 3,500. If you look at the vital capacitance, it's 4,600 for ML. For the for female, uh, it's like a 3 point, like 3,100 ML, 3.1 liters. And their vital, so as your vital capacity is very low, even your, uh, this one, your x reserve volume is also very uh, low uh, for females, like 700 ML. And residual is about like about the same. So this is how like this is I just wanted to you know there's are differences between the male and the female when it comes about like uh, the lung volume also you get to see the differences in them too. Right? This is wanted to wanted to uh, let you guys know. Now and we talked about the lung volume, closing capacities, uh, all that kind of stuff. Right? One thing that I do want to talk about a little bit is about the uh, this residual volumes. You know, the one way, as I talked about the spirometers, like, you know, they were not able to determine the residual volumes, okay? So they use this some method called uh, uh, helium dilutions. And how do they do it is that if I could, if I could make it down here, okay, let me just, let me erase this, guys, okay? So if I, if I erase this and make this right here, all right, and let's just make this even here too, all right? So what happens with the helium dilutions is like, okay, if I, Okay, this is like, what is this? Like a container here, okay? What happens is then there's a, they're given here, there's a volume here, okay? And then the concentration is given. Let's say the concentration is given about like 15%. Okay, this is the 15% of helium was given, okay? And the reason why helium was given is because the helium is insoluble in blood, okay? Uh, and then the concentration is given and we say the concentration is about like five liters of the blood for our case, okay? And then with the spirometers, Okay, with this family, what happens is that they put it in a person's, like, your, uh, your, your person's, let's just say this person's, the person's mouth right here, okay? The person's mouth. So, if they put it, okay, this is a kind of, uh, not a good picture, but here, let's just quickly make a, all right? 
Okay, so this is a person's mouth right here. Okay, it was given there. Putting a person's mouth here, right? So when the person's power, uh, they're smiling right here on you. So what happens is that, so we know that the now, and they, what they do is like, known concentrations and known volumes, okay, they will they will give, okay. Then after that, what happens is they'll ask the patient to take a couple of breath, couple of a couple of breaths. So when the couple of breath uh, the person takes, what happens? Uh, all this kind, of, all this goes right, and the helium. What happens? What happens is that it will mix us. Uh, it will get. What happens is that it will mix us the long volume, and it and then get what happens? It equalizes. So whatever known concentrations they refer as like C one or known con times. We know the volume was a V2, V1, this is a known concentration before it equalizes of the helium. Then after that we do C2, okay, which means that because it, there was no gas exchange happens. Uh, so this C2, so whatever, uh, whatever the, whatever, when it, equali it equalizes, they'll, they'll be able to tell what is the known helium concentrations, okay, times you do V1 plus, let's say, uh, and then V2. That's what they do. Okay? This is the equation they use in order to calculate the residual volumes or actually functional residual capacitance because this V2 is uh, this is referring to your functional residual capacitance, right? Now, what that now now after this, what is the, what is this gonna happen is that now once you know this, right? So C1 we said like 15%, right? So if I do 15% of C1, we say what is that gonna give me? 0.15, right? Times my V1 is five liters. And C2 after equalizes probably it'll become let's say 10% or in our case, and we'll do 10% will be 0 0.10. So we'll say for this one, we'll say it will become 10%. And now we know how V1, it's the exact same thing, right? The five liters. And then we have to find the V2. So if I do the math right here, right? So I have to multiply this two together in order to get my number. So if I do uh, 7, 0 0.5 times uh, 0 0.5, so this should gi uh, give me, uh, so let me just do 0 0.15 times my 5 equal to 0 0.10 times 5 plus 0 0.10 V2. This is what it should happen, right? So what is 15 times 5? So it's 0 0.75, right? Now, in this case, uh, let me just, Use the calculator to determine these numbers, okay? So if I do this, so you have a 0 0.15 times 5, that gives you 0 0.75, right? And you have a 0 0.10 uh, times 5, that gives me a 0 0.5 right here. Plus I have a 0 0.10 uh, V2, right? Now if I do 0 0.75 minus 0 0.5 right here, okay? That will give me because you subtract this zero point because this would zero point two five equal to zero point one zero v two and you do divide by zero point one zero you do zero point one zero so v two is equal to what zero point two five divided by zero point one zero so that should give me a two point five so give me a two point five liters that's a concentration so this is the two point five is the one your FRC that's how the helium dilutions are. That's how you measure the uh, uh, the FRC using the helium uh, dilutions method. All right. Now, this is what I wanted to therefore ask. Okay. And there's all the like Boyle's laws. These are Boyle's laws. Uh, there's a nitrogen washout too. That's other ways also a way of uh, uh, figuring out uh, uh, this uh, residual volumes. Okay. So for now, uh, uh, I think we're going to end it here.